quantum is the description of what is the very small. Because quantum mechanics is that construct that describes the world that we don't see, but the world that makes up everything around us. This is the world of the small. And in order to describe that, you have to use quantum mechanics. Our whole world all around you is the way it is because we understand quantum mechanics. A physicist by the name of Eugene Wigner wrote an article once, something to the effect of the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the natural sciences. We can put a James Webb telescope a million miles from the Earth and know exactly how to get it there. You can predict a solar eclipse to the fraction of a second. Once you have the construct that you now can describe mathematically, that you can start to use to your advantage. And it's that understanding that enabled the development of devices, integrated circuits. You may not see them as quantum as you use them every day, but it's that understanding of how these things are going to behave. If I put this thing in this part of this integrated circuit, it's gonna do this. I know it's gonna do this because I understand the quantum mechanic. If you've ever seen pictures of a hydrogen atom or any atom, you, it's usually kind of this fluffy cloud because we might know that the electron is in that atom, but we have no idea where it is in the atom. It can be anywhere. And that cloud says it's somewhere in this cloud. So it's this description of, I don't really know where it is. I can't pinpoint it. I know that you're sitting in that chair, right? It's perfectly obvious. You're not half in your chair or half out of your chair. You're in your chair. That's classical. We follow classical laws of physics. But an electron doesn't. I can't know where it is. And that inability to know where it is is a characteristic of all that we describe in quantum. An electron has a spin. Now, one of the things that spin does is if you put it in a magnetic field, it acts like a little bar magnet, right? And if you take a bar magnet, if you've ever put iron filings in a magnet, you see that they go one way or the other, parallel or anti-parallel. That little electron does the same thing. It'll either go parallel or anti-parallel because whether it's parallel or anti-parallel, the energy is just a little bit different. If I put that atom in that field, I can now put it where I would like for it to be. I, could, I still can't tell you where it is within the atom. I don't care about that. All I care about is, is it with the field or against the field? We find that this spin plays a critical role that is going to essentially determine so much about how we use quantum mechanics and how we understand this small world. Indy, Indy, you must hurry. Come quickly. I'm reminded of one of the Indiana Jones movies. He's standing for this chasm, right? And the phrase comes to his mind, a leap of faith. It's a leap of faith. And so I think this is the way we need to understand leap. We think a leap doesn't necessarily have to be a physical leap. And we use the term all the time, a leap of imagination. And so when you put it in those terms, could I make a true leap? in my understanding. That would take me from one plateau to another plateau. In physics, we refer to it as what we call a step function. If you think about the progress of science, it tends to just grow like this. And then something happens, a new discovery, a new observation, a new tool, and all of a sudden you can just do this. This is the way to think about 
quantum leap. It's not necessarily a leap in the size of the system, but it's a leap in what we can do with it.